So I'm going to do some talking. I have put a link up there of what I was watching on YouTube. <laughs> it's a big... Microphone's on. So Hawking, um, yes, as you can see in the title, it's Max, um, but it's still only PVE. Why is it taking so long? Only take this long. I'll leave this, and I'll just go over to the co-op one because there's nobody playing it anymore. And see if we can still get the win team deathmatch. I have to kill so many class A's. Max. The burnout, um, everyone's well aware of in gaming. That video was made uh, three weeks ago, was it? Yeah, three weeks ago. By uh, DW Documentaries. Documentary. And it's going into detail about burnout with people in the workplace, but in gaming, it's been a well, well learned, well known uh, thing that's been going on a long time. It's only because this is like sh you can get in and out of matches, play the game, you know, 
Don't have to. It's not like war framework. Is such if that makes sense. I see that channel up that corner there. It was all of it. There was chat up in the left hand corner. Have you seen that?
I thought this was PvE. And it's just that must be just random chat. Or like generated chat. Yeah, Warframe and stuff and all is like I know, you have to be in a mission all the time it feels like. But in this here it's like makes sense uh, if you want to say like casual sounds stupid but feels a bit more, more casual Damn it. It's not good to be on the ground, maybe up, like on a building or something. I know their position would be easier. This one.
push back, however. Yeah. But I can't see nothing. Yeah, I haven't got I haven't even got to the other rope type of max yet, like the Halo ones and stuff. Got a heavy, a scout and a medium. I haven't got the Halo ones, the stealth ones. <sighs> well a normal one would be like a, is it a salt one you call it? So this here you just it's just one task. Well, in Warframe, there's multiple tasks, and you have to pick one to to work through. Um, Sortie of the Two Fort, and then there's DC Universe Online, which is is an open world. I have to, and then end game is just um, upgrading your loot, your your armor. Seems to be. See, they're ranked two, and then that's rank five. We'll try the scout.
Pushing there. I think I was stuck on the ledge there. How did I not get him? <sighs> he was li he had literally no health. It's a spawn me over on this side away, like close to them. Yeah. Enemy sighted.
Try to get up any higher. I won. <sighs> Nobody did any good there. Oh shit. Kill the death ratio was five though. <gasps> yeah, let me see if there's any body in chat or anything and then Well I think I'll it's a lot of these ones. Or bots are they? Just say hello in chat if you're a human being. If you're if you're not a bot, say just put an H or one or hello or something in chat. Or send me a whisper even.
Ah, commitment here. Target there. Just walked into them all. And give them that kill. Can I get a repair? I can't get out of the way. There's like fucking five of them shit, mate. Two angles? One minute all oh, my teams are standing beside me, next minute they're they vanished into the dinner. The way you have to come out of your barrier to, to get a repair like that. One kill. That was the one kill that got me. Changed the whole friggin' game. A like one kill. It's put me off now. Makes me feel even more like shit. It's like I'm even get beat by fucking bots. You know that's how shit I am. worth it when I be when it when I'm able to get all the credits and to buy the other mechs and start working with them. Start 
uh, getting the trajectory to go up, if you want to say, the, the graph to go up, the minute it's just going everywhere and down. This is the one where you need an assault mech or a heavy mech. kills already and I haven't even fucking like, done anything. Every time I'm getting shot in the back now, what the fuck? be all over the map but yet not be anywhere in the map using stealth bots and then and then stealth max and then they're fucking appearing on the map and grouping up and fucking taking targets out. That's what's happening, so I can't fucking do anything. Move. Let's 
see. Can't see shit. Nothing there. Enemy and that's a fucking hologram. Guns! Fucking hell! Time I get them just enough health to fuck kill them, I fucking my guns overheat. Designed perfectly. Use this by one again. Goodness. Enemy How convenient! I'm getting tired of losing here by fucking one or four or whatever. Like do better. Um, get good. Can't get good when you're shit. They even play a different game, it has story mode, but microtransactions maybe. Right. 
Uh, can't even get kills. Look, six out of fifteen I need, and then I can't play a team deathmatch because there's fucking no one plays the game, and still get beat by bots. <sighs> right, different game, I think. Different life, I think. I don't think this is a life for me, like... As much as I want to get my message out there, or have a voice, or say something, it's... I don't think there's any fucking relevance to this. Every time I fucking play a game, it's just... It disheartens me. It's put me off playing or doing anything. Like, even stre this streaming? I don't want to sit and grind fucking resources all day for a new part in a, in a, in a virtual reality that doesn't matter. I'm a fucking 38 coming 39 year old man that fucking needs to re-evaluate his fucking life. And refuses to do so. Sitting trying to get nowhere in life with this. This is what this is. Get a Mac. Oh fuck. Or get a new gun in Warframe. Or get a fucking Gala resources in Genesis Alpha One in it. In a space game that means nothing? I don't know. What I mean is, like, I would rather be doing... Uh... Making art. Drawing or something. Or reading. Or... Even watching YouTube for fuck's sake educates you better than this. Going out into the real world? What about that? I don't know what else to say. Like even before this came onto this, I, I, I was reluctant to even do this. I didn't know which of the four games or whatever I wanted to pick. <sighs> well, that's all cool. It's all cool. Nice. It's nice artwork. That's what I think. It's good. It's good fun to virtually be in a Mac and all. I'm trying to think of the positives, you know. It's just a game. But it just feels like I'm west waste like that's what I'm doing, wasting my life.
I've got two other games here. Which I got a while ago as well. Um, Aliens Fire Team Elite and Surge. I've been wanting to play Surge for a while. I just don't want it to be where I just I turn it on and then I find out it's the same as Anthem. I have to log into Game Pass or something. Just put me off. Uh, or else I find out that you have to get a season pass. Or fucking... You have to buy a... There's microtransactions or something. How do you how do you make this pointless shit fun? It's absolutely fucking pointless. See, unless you're under thirty, it's fucking pointless. And new kids. And even at that, when you're under thirty, you have to fucking so you like. This is your job. If you've nothing else. No fucking... I don't know, like... Something's changing. It's just so fucking... Or maybe it's just me. Finding fucking relevance or responsibility in my fucking life. Yeah, what I mean is like the people that developed this game have fucking forgotten about it too. Or like Warframe, the, the people that are developing it. Digital extremes, like they're doing the same shit. They're making their work. They they're getting a paycheck. Or they're just in a fucking job. That's all it is. What other games is there? DC Universe, Warner Brothers.
or what's that other company that was that thought was good too? They made a few other good games that made that their DC universe. Daybreak. A few other good games, and that's what they're doing. They're working. This this literally isn't work. Is it not work because I'm not getting paid, or is it not work because it's like voluntary? Salesmanship or something? Voluntary promotion? Free promotion? Free marketing? I'm just feeling like a fucking nobody and a nothing. Fucking useless. Coming in like. I'm just sitting here contemplating whether I'm going to be sitting playing another fucking game all day. That has no relevance. Like, fucking absolutely no relevance to my life whatsoever. And what I mean playing, like, literally just sitting with this controller as fucking everybody else. And wasting my day from 12 o'clock onwards. And it wouldn't be any different than sitting fucking around, wandering around this fucking house or wandering around somewhere else. At least if I'm not fucking sitting here or looking at this fucking screen for the next six hours or something, it's fucking has. Uh, uh, it has at least some sort of relevance. You know what, I, I just will. Like, I fucking don't care anymore. Like, I don't think I'll ever want to do this shit. I'll play games, but fucking hell, I can't sit here for six hours. Like, this is why I don't fucking work as well, because of this shit. Chain the desk. Or forced to do, like, what the fuck is this? This this has no relevance, as I say, like, I cannot describe it anymore. I can, you can never, like a new gun or something in, a, in in the game, like what's the fucking point? Try really having a game to play for an hour or so, but I'm not sitting here for six hours playing a game. Because my mindset isn't on it. My mindset just isn't fucking interested anymore. It's not. It's not a game anymore. It's. It's become something else. Um, I. A grind for life or something. 
that you don't get paid for, that you don't, you never get the touch. At least in a job, I suppose you you get the you get the money. In this, you don't. You get nothing. You get nothing. You don't even get fucking anybody to give you any feedback. Never mind fucking money. I do get. Oh, well, okay, I get the follows. Like, I uh, have to have to give that credit at least. Like, I don't know if that. Like, people do. Fair enough. The follows is is other people want to sit me sit here and see me doing this. At least it's some sort of incentive. This whole thing where the follows leads to to chats, chats lead to um relationships or whatever or conversations, and then conversations lead to. Developments and developments lead to other things, you know, from that. But I have no control over this game whatsoever, like for this one anyway in particular. The only thing I can do is sit here and play it to get the points or whatever, which the developers could just type in a load of, uh, just give all the way max to yeah, like make it all open. like. Uh, or the people that made the game, it has no... <sighs> it's like being restricted in work. You're restricted to, to whatever your job is. And then they give you more leeway to do other things. While in this, they don't even give you that. Cause, or in any game. You just have to do whatever... Th is it's made to do and make the most of it Even sitting watching a film for an hour and a half is is far more beneficial than this. At least it's entertaining. Like this here, it's not the same as if like people compare games to films for the time, and looking at it now, like playing games can be fun. It's just, it, the, the thing that's put me off is the whole, get this next gun. Uh, Warframe, put a format on and upgrade your, uh, put a format on and re-level. Do the same thing that you've been doing with this gun to get an extra two damage out of it. And then do the same mission, but different setting, different skin for the character, similar abilities, and do it all over again. And we'll just make it look as if it's, that's the same as films, films do the same thing where they they make a, I watch the sci-fi films, like, they make a sci-fi film, and then they start off, oh, the aliens are blowing up the world, or whatever, they're going to take over the world. Next thing you know, the humans win, and kill all the aliens, or send the aliens back to the, their planet. Every single time. In every single film. It's never the aliens win, obviously. I think the last big one was Independence Day. Or Aliens? Alien or Aliens? 
It's still going on, sure. Uh, other films. But uh, the what I'm trying to say is, that only lasted an hour and a half. You watch the film. In the game, it's forever. It's the rest of your life. It's once you start a game now, it's the same stuff till the end of time. Or if you want to spend money, even more so, like to get that new gun instead of playing the game, pay to win or whatever you want to call it. While in a film, you buy the film and you can watch it as many times as you want. There might not be anything else in it, you can, but there is still a director's card and uh, the behind the scenes interviews and all that stuff. You can do it, you can watch all that and f actually finish it. Actually finish everything about it and still go online and research all the thing about the film. See if there's going to be more story plots or if there's going to be uh, there was things that there was taken out. There was um, what do you call them? The scenes, the draw the scenes, the different scenes you could probably watch the deleted scenes. Um, there's you could do all that research still on one film and finish it. Still learn everything about it, but yet in a game you would still be playing it in ten years time, like Warframe. It's 11 years on, it's keeping a company, it's keeping people in a job. Because they found a way of... Uh, leveraging? Leveraging? What they have against people. So it's like... Uh, it's like, the, the best way of me describing it, and that... It'll sound so far, like extreme, but I'm trying to give an example where it's like, um, you, you need, uh, you need electricity for your house. Well, you just go to whatever electric company there is available and you pay your electric bill. And then you have electricity. And when I mean, I was going to use a different example, but I'll use this one in a minute. Where you buy your buy your electric from that electric company, you don't you don't have an alternative. You can't go. Oh, I'm just going to fire up the generator and run my own electricity for the end of time. For as long, because you still have to go and get um, gas or whatever, or diesel or whatever you want to call it. To fill it up so you have to go there too it's not a question it's you have to and more frames found that they found that you have to go to them if you want a good game anymore like you want to enjoy now i'm not saying it's the only game there is other games that you can play but you're generally pointed in that direction and you you'll be hooked on that for until Until that company decides to remove the game from the, the internet. While a film, as I said, you can learn everything about the film. Everything, absolutely everything. And and block it out in your mind, finish it. Like, finish, you know everything about it. And that will be, that will be it. You wouldn't have to l go back to it again. Unless, obviously, they bring out a second film or sequel. But, that would be the second game. And there is no second game anymore. There's no second game. It's it's this game and that's it till the end of time. Helldivers 2 till the end of time. Um, Hawken till the end of time. Um, Warframe till the end of time. Um, what was it? DC Universe till the end of time. You know, it's not it's not finished. You can't get to the end. There is no end. While in a film there's there's film one E. T. Film one Alien. Film one um 
Skyline film. What other films is there? Independence Day. Film one. That's the one. That that's it. It's not a uh Independence Day till the end of time. You have to watch it. Keep what like it's still running. Like there's no end. Them actors are still working in Independence Day, like Will Smith and all. Or Men in Black, till the end, like, the, your, Will Smith's still in it, till the end of time, you know, he, he's still on set, making up lines, and, you know, that's probably why the TV series is so popular, because TV series is like, oh, we want to keep watching the next episode, there's a second episode, It it's, first episode, starts it, second episode, third episode, four, five, six, and then eventually it blocks out. It stops. They 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 end the series. Eventually, but then you can get seasons where it's like uh, Dexter. Dexter has thirteen, fourteen, or fifteen seasons, I think. And that was it. There's eight seasons, sorry. I keep thinking there's more. So, what I'm trying to get at here is there's nowhere else to turn when it comes to the games. You just play that game until they find Warframe, for that matter, find the key to, to keep it going for the end of time, the, the conversion. So it's like, we have a, a customer base here and we can keep them hooked, converted, um, literally converted religiously, just keep playing because of our formula. That's why I don't understand where now it, it is a turning point where there's first Ascendance out. And once it comes out, I got, there's something else going on in the background. It makes me think, hold on a minute. Why is there all these hundreds of other, million, thousands of other games? But yet this one in particular hasn't got a variation. It's like making, again, like Alien. And then nobody else making a, an alien film. No, no other company came or any ideas come up to anywhere close to the similar to that. But there is there is films out there that's like that. But in Warframe, there's no transference scheme. There's no. Uh, the first descendant is. Is, it doesn't have a transference thing. There's destiny. Destiny is supposed to be the closest, wouldn't it? As everyone says. And look at the way it's going. It's like they're, they've, they've cut out the market, if you want to say, to where it's like, you have nowhere else to turn but here. You can only see this film till the end of time. Independence Day. Alien. Men in Black. These are the only films you're ever allowed to play or watch. There's, there's never any other variation that any indie developer or studio can make. Like as if to say, we have the rights or legislation to this and if we see anything else in the world, we're going to come down hard on you with the, with the, with the ban or the cancellation stick. That's what makes me think about it and I go... I, I don't want to be sitting doing this till the end of the time. Don't get me wrong, they're, they're good fun. It's it's just I don't see a relevance in something I, 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 I can't touch. I can't fucking touch. I, there's never going to be a Mac in real life like that, ever. Oh, well, there is Macs, but I mean... They have designed one, I think. 
or two of them. They're not like that, like warfare mechs. They're not like made that way. And even at that, like as I say, it's only on fucking YouTube. I'm never getting them go near anything like that. Or that's what I'm saying, like real life, going out to the world and just going, fuck this shit. I'm not sitting here six hours a day to. To never to play a never ending Warframe, never ending DC Universe, never ending story that I can never touch anything in it. And it, but the only thing, you, but the only thing it's relevant is you can keep putting money into it. Well, why am I going to do that? It hasn't got a. It's never going to give me anything in return. It's just, it's. It's throw. It's. It might as well. I might as well go down and burn. My, like literally to get sit here and if I have any money and burn it in front of the screen. And that's illegal. That's what you do when you give money to a game. At least that's what I'm trying to relate it to with a film. At least you get a product with a film. You get. You get. You get something. Of entertainment. That's what it's for. Like you. You. You, you do get. A film, you get a film to, to watch, and then it ends, and then you you you, you can credit criticize it or or say you enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it or whatever. But with the game, it's like we'll change it, we'll make it this, we'll do it that, and they never do any of that anyway. And it's like they just bring in a new gun, or a new skin for a fucking mech, or a new skin for a character, and then change take the abilities from the other characters and put them into this character. I'm just trying to justify it, you know, like. I. I can't describe how I feel about this shit. Uh, and, and even more so, like. Uh, it makes me feel even more less of a human being because. Twitch. When streaming on Twitch, it's I'm a nobody. You know, I'm I'm a I'm a fucking irrelevant bot as far as anybody's concerned. Uh NPC or whatever. And it wouldn't even matter if fucking if I disappeared right now. Well, you've got these other bigger streamers or whatever you want to say, like, like I watched Rax playing Diablo 3, and he kept streaming every day or whatever. Neil Ness, who plays Warframe, um, he also plays Warframe and all, the, the bigger streamers, if you want to say. Nightmare Frame, he's moving on, like, he's trying to sort things out with his life, or if you want to say, do things. Um, and he's been doing it for a long time. But again, I think these guys are only like, I think they're under 30. I don't know, Neoness 007. I know what he is. Or Nightmare Frame. And I'm not getting that. No, I'm not getting that. I don't... I don't have any horse in the race, as I say. Like, a dog in the race. I don't care. Honestly, don't care. The Nightmare Frame's doing... First Descendant now. He's moving on.
They're deep into these games. And it's even at the point now where, like, there's one there. Read, read patch notes, like, when did it become a thing about patch notes in a fucking game? Like, I wasn't sitting here when I was playing fucking Metal Gear Solid 2, the first one, on PlayStation, thinking about fucking patch notes. Oh, it's, oh dear. I fucking need to read the patch notes before I fucking play Metal Gear Solid. Or even after, like, when they brought out the tuxedo suit and the fucking bandana and all the glitches and stuff and all that was happened to it. And if you went out of your way to fucking patch it in the game, like, what was the fucking point? I think anything I think would be more relevant to fucking have a game that's glitched. Like, there's double. That's a perfect example. If anybody remembers, GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo 64. There was a glitch cartridge. I have one. I have a glitch cartridge. For N64. It's no relevance to me. But. The glitch cartridge was. You couldn't get. You couldn't complete the, the last mission or whatever. You know. I, I don't want a fucking patch for that. It's fucking pointless. It, the relevance to it now. Of patching it to complete it is fucking pointless. The same way as playing these games till the end of time is pointless. Getting a new fucking gun in a game is fucking pointless. It's far more beneficial to take your money, right? And go out into the fucking real world and buy yourself whatever for se let me see, seventy dollars or seventy quid. What what could I get for $70, 70 quid? You could buy your fucking home shopping for it, your groceries. You could... You could buy upgrades for your PC or whatever, or whatever it is. You could buy... I don't even know if you could buy any pair of shoes and stuff and all that. Put fuck a petrol diesel in your car. If you have one, you know it's far more relevant to do that than fucking pay seventy dollars or seventy quid on a fucking game now and read patch notes about fucking people that don't give a shit about you. I've changed something in a game, like buy a film. As I say, buy fucking a few films. 70 quid and watch the game buy a box set fucking this sounds like I'm fucking ranting you know he doesn't say how old he is I'm just going to guess they're all under fucking 30. Could be wrong. You know? You're sitting playing games. You, and what I mean is you've, you've no fucking kids. For, like, that's this is what it is. But if you've got kids, life is about money. You need incentive. And Or even if you have a partner or a girlfriend or something, or a boyfriend or whatever. Like, when I watch even the women on streaming, they're doing stuff like... Me, 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 as I say, to get noticed. They're not even, like, playing the games. Like I said, I could be making, I could be doing artwork, or I could be fucking... Making progress in my life, but no, sit here talking shit and complaining, or wondering if my, if I have any fucking relevance in the world. I 
by playing a game that has... Uh, I'll just bring out a new gun. We'll change it. Well, they're not going to change this, but it, like Warframe. Oh, we're bringing out Jade Shadows or whatever it is. And fucking new Warframe. You know, play a wee campaign as an expansion. That's what it is. It's an expansion like Daveri and Demos, the Sanctum Atomica. Um, we'll just keep, as I said before, like adding on stuff. But we'll never go back to the old stuff. Because there's no investment in it. There's no money in it. They just keep adding something else on to the story. Um, Zaraman. A long time they needed to get Zaraman out. Apparently there was supposed to be this here story about the Zaraman. And look what we got. And then we got Daveri. There was supposed to be this big change in the origin system. And they brought in a fucking spaceship. And... You, you fight on the spaceship. You collect your items on the spaceship. Oh, we got um, Gyre. As well, along with that. You know, it, it, but it's just the same fucking shit. And that's what I'm trying to say. Gyre, um, Calervo for Daveri. Like, adding in another character. Oh, what, what abilities can we fucking pull from other characters or what can we make up stick them in that one and throw it into the fucking game now it might not be that simple with that fucking like black and white but you know you got whole teams working on this shit and I'm going <sighs> same like Jade Shadows as I say is that what you call it Jade Shadows Jade Warframe Jade, my uh, Jade Shadows, coming June, yeah. And there's always something. This is why they're good at because they they something every week, including patch notes. Like I, you don't you just skim over them. It's just like yeah yeah yeah. You changed you changed um a percentage from three percent to two percent. You changed it from three percent to four percent. And then it's like, oh, whoa! And everybody starts fucking on the internet. The YouTubers or the content creators start going, and blowing up everywhere, going, and slapping on their fucking uh, thumb th thumbnails, and all going, fucking three percent change to fucking Jair Slade. You're like, what the fuck, man? Like, really? Is it count that much? <coughs> Instead of sliding fucking half a meter, she slides a whole 75 fucking centimeters now. Fucking hell. Or, uh... Or a gun that, that used to shoot fucking 20 meters fall off fucking... It now only shoots to 19 meters falls off. You have to stick a certain mod on it. Fuck me, you know, like, how much of a fucking, uh, so not neck beard, um, internet sleuth do you need to be? I'm not, I'm not fucking knocking people's intelligence, but you need to, like, the, in fact, if anything, I'm, I'm fucking giving the intelligence more relevance, the ego, where it's like, You've went that far into making thumbnails and fucking reading the notes and questioning the whole fucking game and doing all the stuff. And it, now it's so like, you're so deep, you know everything about the game. And it's never, they, they're never going to recognize you. Never. They're never going to come up to you and go, I... What is it? You want a job or something? You know? They're never going to give you that. They're never going to care. I've sat here for years doing, trying to think of... Diablo 3 was a good one. Blizzard. I sat and made up all this wee bullshit thing and so on. That I could uh, make new characters and shit and all. 
No? They're never gonna look at me. Never. D -d don't even know that I exist. Don't even know I exist. That I'm do like, the people, anybody who's watching this, don't even know I exist. Never mind Blizzard looking at if I exist. Like, this is me here. And it has no relevance. So why would they look at my shite? That I post on, I I don't even post on the internet, but I posted some wee picture on a fucking forum for Blizzard somewhere, like, no, it's just some wee, it might as well be like, no, those wee competitions you get for kids that are five-year-olds in McDonald's, that's what it's like, and you don't win anything, don't even win in McDonald's, the McDonald's is better. Draw a picture of a monster. And that's what it feels like. It feels like, draw a picture of a monster. And you scribble a wee picture down of a monster. Oh yes, this would be great. And this is its powers. It has powers to do, like, laser beam eyes and fucking farts out its mouth. And it's really stinky. You know, that's, that's what, the, that's what it seems like. And that's what it'll ever be. And then, like Verona said a lot for me. See, when it comes to fucking Warframe, it just answered everything for me. Right, there was Verona that came out for uh, Lua, Lua on the survival mission that they made. And then, on the back of that, they made Dulux Zaku, right? And I just went, and I had been watching for months on the forums. Months I looked up and it, on the forums uh, of Warframe for the artwork that's being t created. Okay. And they just took the first thing they seen. Of the, the Zaku design. The first thing. The first thing they went. They, they must have Google searched their website right. Checked the form. Seen the first picture. Clicked on that. Downloaded it. And made that. And then Verona was exactly the same. This is what Verona's going to be. Look like that. And then, and then I remember Liam XP. Or was it Gaz TTV. Talking about it, saying something about like, I, it's gonna be the the wolf, wo, wo, the werewolf, uh, warframe and all, and then, when they brought her out, I went, oh my god. It was the very fucking picture that somebody put up, on the forum, the very first one that clicked it, downloaded it too, on the digital extremes, and then made it in the game. They had no fucking research nothing not a fucking dicky bird and there was no trailer video there was no fucking like proper backlog or back backstory tour and they just took the first zagri thing too now this isn't against the people who made the 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 picture of Verona and Zaku. N not at all. What I'm trying to say is. Them two pictures that I seen months before. Well, it must have been a long time before. On the forum. And they just picked out. The first thing they seen. Right. Now I'm going to say something here. So. The first thing they seen, there was literally nothing else for them to work with. They couldn't even use their own creativity to fucking make a character. And that's a big thing, like, they made all them other designs for the Warframes. But they, from the community, they picked the first thing that they, they can find. 
And again, keeping costs down, money down, and all that there, what they did as well is they, they grabbed somebody's work, which was for free, give him a credit or whatever for making it, mention his name. That's all they done in the dev form or the dev video. They, they just mentioned his name. He made this he made this picture, that's it. And then they carried on. And then that was like the same for the Zaku one. The Dulux. Mention the name because they don't want any credit getting took away from them or any reputation. Because the company's all about image and about reputation. And that's what made me think then, it's like... <sighs> There's obviously something else going on here that they're able to cover up this market. Make sure nobody else gets in on it. And I don't see why, that of all the thousands of games that have been... Like, I could pick out a game. There's Warfighter or Starfighter 3000. I'm looking at PlayStation 1 game. Probably never heard of it, have you? I would say a good majority of people never heard of this game. Right? Or like the one I was going about the other day. Warzone 2100. Right? Now, this isn't a fucking magical game. This isn't anything special. This game here, right? If you can even fucking see it. My shitty camera. And, you know, your wee spaceship... A wee spaceship, and you go around and you shoot other stuff with your wee spaceship. Fully 3D, you know, right? Uh, who made it? Telstar made it. Right, let's, let's have a look. Right? Telstar. See what happened to them. Okay? Let's see what happened to Telstar. How we look. Oh, fuck, it's coming up with a musical band. Hellstar, I don't even know. Studio is it? Football? Or not? Why do I say football? Gaming? Hellstar. Electronic Studio. It's good. So their their proper their proper term is Telstar Electronic Studios, right? On Wikipedia. They made Fable as well, did they? Fable? Fable? Did they? Did they make that? I, they did. They made it. Fable is a PC point-and-click adventure game developed by Symbiosis Interactive. It is. It was a company's only release. It was published in North America... Surtech and internationally by Telstar Electronic Studios. Fable runs on MS DOS. It's it's a game from like 1996, featuring SVGA graphics, DirectX and Windows 95, and full voice acting. The game it has a minimalist user interface showing only the cursor, which displays the current verb selected for use and this descriptive text. Now, I'm not going to go into the details, but there's a plot and all there. Um. Of Fable, right? They made uh, what was the other? So their publishers, Complete Onside Soccer, the PlayStation as well, Speedboat Attack, uh, 1997. I don't know if I played that. It looked like, that was a good one. Apparently, I was a popular one, 1997, right? Now, what I'm trying to say is, pick a fucking random game from the past. And you could, you could grab that game, and f if you could get, you, you could just Chinese copy it, and just go, I'm just going to change the name from Starfighter 3000 to Star, um, uh, Starship Fighter, um, 2000, you know what I mean, like, just fucking absolutely fucking destroy the name. It's like making an essay or or whatever you call what do you call one of them things that people do 
the write up in for universities. You do your essay write up or whatever, and you you can't copy it directly from the book. So you just change a couple of the words around, and then just use the same fucking thing. And in Warframe, they've got that where it's like they've created a, a three base, three base fucking character. You've got the operator, um, the Warframe, and your shadow, if you want to say. Or you can just use your drifter, your operator, and your Warframe, right? And then a class be a system. That's what they've got, and you can transfer in and out of that. While in, in Path of Exile, it's 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 practically non-class based, where it's like open class. You can put your gems in. You know, I've thought of these things for a long time, or like. <sighs> I don't know what else to say, like how to describe these fucking things. These these games companies, they're not doing anything special. You can do Chinese knockoffs of them all fucking day. All day, all night, if people knew their fucking initiative. I'm sitting here doing fuck all. Making no money and not getting noticed by nobody. I might as well be a fucking bot as I say, an NPC. That's what it feels like every day. And... It's even more irrelevant doing this. I've thought of many a time. Uh, my legacy of Cain. I thought it through. Like inside out. Upside down. All the different stories. All the twists and turns. In, in the loop of the story. And the paradox. And this. And Soul Reaver. And all this fucking shite. Right? For years of my life. And got. And done nothing. Right? Because. Your woman Amy. I think it was. Or whatever. Never fucking. It wouldn't even matter. Like, she didn't want to carry on the story anyway, as well, for Nosgoth. And. Simon Templeman, he's. He's still. He still does uh, videos on YouTube for Kane and talks about the game and all. There's people that's trying to make it into a 3D form as well. For the original Legacy came Blood Omen. But no, the, the, what they did is they took Blood Omen, um, because of the rights and all the fuck ups with the companies and the, the whatever happened, passing the hands of the IP and all bullshit, they just went, fuck it, we'll just make Soul Reaver and we'll just stick a title of Legacy of Kane on it. We'll make our own character and then we'll cover it up with Blood Omen 2 as a, as a prequel. <coughs> Because you can't go back in time, obviously. Um, and there is loopholes in it. There is, there is story holes in it. You could pick holes in it. They tried to cover every base when it comes to the game. And there's a lot of there's a there's three or four different websites that dedicate to it. Is it Forbidden Archive or something's one of them? I'm not sure. For Legacy of Cain. Or there's another game, like, along the same lines. Blood Rhyme was one of them, obviously. For Soul Reaver, which was pretty good. Never seen much come from Blood Rhyme. It was the whole fighting the army thing in World War II and all. And it was good. It was good fun. Blood Rhyme, right? But here's one here that people probably... And you can check it out on Rank 1 Global. I've got it as well. Which had a good story arc and had good character bases in it. But never never nothing else really came from it. It was primal. You know, along the lines of legacy key and type of stuff. Nothing else came from it. Let me see if I'm wrong. I don't think anything else came from it. As I say, Telstar was one of those companies, like we made a few games and you can Chinese, like even Hawking here, you wouldn't even have to call it Hawking, you just call it Mech f Fighters and just fucking do the same thing again. And copy all their shit and stick a campaign and all in it. If it was popular and you've got a customer base or whatever you want to call it, and just fucking make it. You just do it, just fucking make the, the exact, literally exact same mix, but instead of that, 
it's never calling that, that gun or that mech assault mech, call it a attack mech. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they're fucking doing. They ever make a sequel for it? <laughs> for Primal? No, they didn't. Didn't really get popular enough, apparently. They did a improved graphics one. Compared to Laura Croft. That was it. Two thousand three it came out. And there was nothing else since. So there you go. You know. I could sit here all day talking about different games. That are never gonna be released. Never developed. Never created. Nothing. Ever. Um, I don't know how else to describe this, but I'm getting sick and tired of talking about mis talking about shit that is never going to change. Um, companies have got the market wrapped up in some way, in the background by licenses or whatever IP addresses and all that shit. <sighs> the bigger companies have come through. There's something about there's something about EA, EA came out as well. There, what the fuck was that? Um, let me see. Something about EA came out there last night. It's always doom and gloom. End of the world. Fucking AI is going to take over. Ticket jobs. Fucking uh, world's going to shit. Um, gaming industries. Fucking going under. Never going to be able to make money. They never were making money, so... Um, I don't know why they would fucking keep doing that. Um, it was Bellular or put something else up? What was the other things?
what's that? Tar Hink jobs. Always always the end of wearable jobs. It's fucking everyone's gonna be sacked. What would everybody do? Like it wouldn't be any different what it is now. Like that's what I'm saying, like that's why these fucking companies just fucking sack you on a whim. It's not a fucking about success, non success, fail, whatever, no. Like, if you imagined if you if you actually if anybody had a fucking imagination you think about that for a minute. Imagine the whole world just got laid off tomorrow. Like right now. Just say there was an announcement to say, like, that's it. Work's done for. We're not making any more money. You know, everyone just go and fucking room the fucking the the the, the fucking the forests and fucking good luck. Imagine they did that, right? We'll all go in the distraught chaos all of a sudden because fucking the president of America or whatever turned around and says, like, you know what? I can't be bothered anymore. Just fucking just fucking make a legislation where everybody everybody in the world, all the companies just crash and it's fucking it's over. We give up. We don't care. Which is highly like near the impossible to ever happen. Like COVID was a perfect example of that because they that would mean then that everybody will just be like, well, what, what, when, how are we going to get money? How are we going to get money? How are we going to get money? You know, they would just search the internet, right? Or make those things that they wanted to do. Making clothes. You know, like when they went home, um, become, uh, the, or, um, growing their own fucking garden patches fucking all the things would happen right where it'd be, everyone would just become self-employed literally self-employed like literally just go we are self-employed and that's what all these ones are doing on youtube that's what they're doing that's what tiktok's doing that's what youtube's doing that's what fucking all these people are doing games industry whatever Everybody and every company is self-employed. The only thing you're doing is walking into a place and going and, and putting a hand out and going, where's my paycheck? Where's where's my paycheck? You don't care what if you go over and shit on your desk and fucking wipe it up the walls and shit and all. It doesn't matter. They'll just pay the cleaners. It'd be cheaper to pay the cleaners to come in and clean it than to get you to fucking you know, to do your work and clean it. You should just ask for more money or something. Or say, no, I don't care. It's not my problem. You know, that's how easy it is. You know, so that's what happened. And everyone, all these businesses would just pop out of nowhere like they did in COVID. People just go on to eBay and start selling their shit on eBay. Um... All these housing, uh, what do you call it? State agents and stuff and all will just pop out of nowhere too. Just to all start over again. That's what, that's what would happen. It would just happen. It, would, it wouldn't it would be a debate. It would just be like, oh, a wee bit of a fucking distraught chaos that the president of America or whatever fucking says, that's it, he's had enough. Or fucking president of Russia or fucking Chinese... Prime Minister or whatever, just turn around and goes like, you know what, just just go and find something else to do. All them, we're, we're not funding any companies anymore ever. We don't care, we're not printing no more money. That's what would happen. And then they just go and live in their underground bunkers or whatever, and we all just live on the surface. Until they decide to use the nukes or whatever, or fucking... Or they get tired of living in their bunkers and they come back out again and go, we own the world, so we're gonna start our comp. We're gonna we're gonna take the world back again by paying you more. You know it has no fucking relevance. Anyway, the internet is very worried about Hellblade Two Dev Studio. Like really, they're they the internet's worried about it. Like. Okay, you can tell that's a meme right away. Like, um, 
Uh, what other shit's on my fucking YouTube feed? Windows update spies on you. Bill Gates. Are they? Life is getting hard. Wisdom from old. From another person. Um, Sky News. Smartphone ban for under 16s. Um, there's a bigger issue. Says bereaved mother. Oh. Smartphone ban, aye. How? Like. Like. On Sky News. If they all them boomers and all them fucking Labour voters or whatever you want to fucking say that's making these polls that I've fucking looked up in the UK are sitting watching Sky News, right? You're sitting watching Sky News and it says smartphones ban for under 16s. Smartphone ban. Like, you would need to have the brain of a fly to, to even contemplate that they could do that. We would do that to ourselves, right? There's, I would guarantee you that somebody's sitting watching that going, Oh, you're going to burn the smartphones on the 16 year olds? You're going to burn them? While their fucking 16 year old child's sitting right beside them, right beside them on TikTok. You're going to burn them and the, and the 16 year olds? Are they? Are they really going to, like, Look at yourself. Your your sixteen year olds sitting right beside you on TikTok, taking pictures of herself or himself. They're gonna ban them, like, right? And if they do, right? Here, let's say let's say out of the absolute fucking madness, right? That they actually could do it. They could actually fucking achieve this fucking smartphone 16 year old ban, right? And we banned all the smartphones from the 16 year olds, right? Across the world or UK or wherever the fuck it is, right? Let's say they were capable of doing it. Do you know what? Like, what Samsung and Apple and fucking Windows or Microsoft and all. Or all these other big Nokia and all mobile phones gonna do, companies gonna do, are they gonna turn around and go, oh, that's right, we better not sell them phones to fucking adults that's gonna sell them to fucking six, their 16 year old kids? We can't do that. That's, that's illegal. It's illegal to sell s mobile phones to 16 year olds. Do you know what happens after that, right? Do you know what actually happens? That it becomes, say they do ban them or make them illegal to 16 year olds. The market for 16 year olds wanting mobile phones fucking goes through the fucking, it goes astronomical. It goes to the, it goes in, it goes as far as, as fucking Jupiter. The seals will go through the roof. They, these mobile phone companies will not be able to keep up with the fucking production that they would they would be would be swamped there would be cities under under mountains of mobile phones that's how much the ban would change anything and everybody all these adults will be sitting watching sky news going oh banned up for the 16 year olds and there's like 16 year olds with 50 phones connected together fucking taking 50 pictures at a time of themselves to go on to 50 different fucking platforms. That's what happens. That's how fucking like astronomically fucking stupid it sounds. What's this one? Labour will change Britain for the better. Like, no, no, right? I'm just going to take that one title that's on the Evening Standard, right? An actual newsletter website, or uh, right? Labour will change. Change! Like, actually change! Anything. Change Britain for the better. Vows Keir Stammer. Vows Keir Stammer. Hey, I'm I'm gonna look up one fucking thing on the internet. Right? I'm gonna look up one fucking thing. When 
was Labour. Last in power in the UK. Someone else has already asked it. In 1987 to 2010 was the last time they were in. Right? The last time Labour was in. Now, I'm just taking that one quote, right? And it says, they will change. And he says he vows to change it. Right? And let's go back into history. Let's check what they actually fucking changed in the past. And now, there's two sides to every story in there. So you could say that all the stuff that's quoted on this here actually changed anything. Right? Let's read between the lines. Let's read between the magical lines. So. The modern political history of the United Kingdom in 1979 to the present began with Maggie Thatcher. Gained in power in 1979, giving rise to 18 years of conservative government. Victory in the Falklands War in 1982 and government... See, claiming something straight away. Victory in the Falklands War. No, no, no. No, no, that wasn't victory. That was because they wanted to stay away from... They didn't want to fucking leave Britain. So they didn't change anything. These political leaders didn't fucking change anything. The fucking soldiers went out and fucking shot people. But, again, okay. Give them credit. The credit for something they didn't do. The government's strong opposition to trade unions. Right? How, so... That's, that's absolutely fucking genius again. I just looked up, fuck it, I read three lines. And it says, the strong opposition to trade unions. Trade unions. Like, come on, come on, right? Let's, let's think about this for a minute. Trade union or labor union, right? Often simply referred to as a union, is the organization of workers who suppose is... Those purpose is to maintain or improve the conditions of their employment. Right? Anybody got a fucking brain left? Right? Trade union, British English, quote, uh, bracket, or labour union, American English, right? It fucking says it right there on Wikipedia. It doesn't take a fucking genius to look a shit up on Google. But sure, I, I must be the exception, and I must be the fucking idiot, and I must be the problem, and I'm, I must be the one that's not reading this, right? Because I'm just reading it right here in, in, in fucking black and white right in front of me, right? Often, often simply referred to as a fucking... Often, often simply referred to as a union. Right? A union? A union! A fucking union! Right? It's an organization of workers! Fucking workers! Those purpose is to maintain, 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 or improve the conditions of their fucking employment. Right? So, Keir Stormer, Keir Stormer, yeah, Keir Stormer, Keir Stormer, Labour will change Britain for the better. First, Keir Stormer. No, no. No, no, he's not changing fucking jack shit. He, he, he is going to sit and let the establishment fucking destroy anything. If any resemblance, as long as he's getting a paycheck for humanity. I don't, I don't get who these people are. Like, why is these people, like, it's set up, it's set up. What's it say? On the campaign trail in Scotland ahead of the general election on July 4th. Which is illegal? Which is illegal? July 4th, illegal? Illegal election, an illegal election, because Rishi just decided. Rishi, the opposition, the opposition just decided. He just fucking decided. That it's on July 4th. 
Sir? Sir? Keir Starmer. And when they get a sir, it, it means a lot of things. Sir? Keir Starmer. Insisted. His party? Can? Can kick the Tories out of power at Downing Street. He's, 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 no, no, no. Ah. Uh. Right, let's say, okay, let's say that it's just, that means that has no relevance. So, that means then that political history, as I said, Victory in the Falklands War in 1982 and, and the government's strong opposition to trade unions helped lead the Conservative Party to an, another three terms in government. Right, 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 okay, yeah, right. Trade unions or labour union often simply referred to as a union, is an organization of workers whose purpose is to maintain and or improve the conditions of their employment. Such as attaining better wages and benefits, improving working conditions, improving safety standards, establishing complacent, compliant procedures, compliant com procedures, developing rules governing status of employees, rules governing promotions, just cause conditions for termination and protecting and increasing the bargaining power of workers. What, what's, like, what part of doing work does people not fucking, com like, get through their thick little fucking, like, their craniums? Like, are your craniums that thick and you just have wee teeny 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 weeny fucking fly brains that just can process one thing at a time. He says, Keir Starmer says he's going to fix the world. But Joe Biden fucking is, is the fucking, is the man that fucking runs the world. <sighs> but his son, sure, he can just have laptops everywhere and fucking and talk to anybody he wants. Or Tommy Blair, there's another good one, he's not fucking list. Tony Blair was a good one too. What's New York got to say about that? You know, you've got a wee portal down there in Dublin at the minute. So you're fucking going to say it. That they're antagonising you with. But Tony Blair, it's, apparently it's the people in Dublin's fault why Tony Blair was the one that fucking caused it. He was the one that sent... Or no, 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 it wasn't him. That's right, I forgot. That's right, the Americans wanted it, didn't you? You just wanted to send all them trips over to Iraq. Because there was, because it was George Bush at the time, you know, when he decided, oh yes, that's right, and he sat there was upside down fucking child book, and uh, uh, he got the the report that the fucking nine the the twin towers went down. But, but a week before the guy took the insurance out, but sure, that does that doesn't matter. The BBC covered that one. We're not talking, don't talk to each other. But the workers, you know, no, the workers, I tidied up the ground zero, did their big fucking mass circle around it and all, and that was nothing to do with a ritual. Nothing to do with a ritual. Just the, the, the point out that they didn't organize something. They didn't organize this circle, they didn't organize any of that. It was just completely and utterly fucking random on the spot improvis improvisation that they just all gathered in a big fucking circle round ground zero and called it ground zero and did all the things they did. It was just absolutely improvised. Everybody just shows up. There was no organisation in it whatsoever. And Keir Starmer's going to change. He's going to kick the Tories out, yeah? Kick the Tories out. I think I think it was already agreed that July fourth was made by Rishi, which is the opposition. But sure, that doesn't that doesn't count. That's right. It's just it's just that he's going to kick him out.
This is for you. Because this is this is for you. Because this is an election about change. Is it? Alright. Oh, that's what he's saying. So again, as I always read between the lines, it's maybe I'm reading it. I read it too much, that's right. Because this is an election for change. Nah, it's just nothing that hey, you know. But everyone's under the impression it's gonna change the world. We're gonna be singing Kumbaya by the fucking hour on the fifth of July. So everyone should be so voting the SMP. What's the makeup? A shitty advert. But we've went off on a tangent. Way off. It fucking hurts. I was meant to be looking up the thing about fucking EA.
What's that? Thousands of whistleblowing NHF staff are being silenced as bosses spend millions covering scandal. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of what the NHS have done on babies. And if they can do that, they can get away with it. Mm -hmm. It was never about helping people, right? That's why it's called the NHS. It's called the trust. They have to even put the word trust into it to make you believe in it. It's more about distrust because the people in there actually want to help you, but it's doing the opposite effect, which is designed to do. About money. Just shut up, do your told. Bury your fucking head. Keep your head down. So it's always been about. We're in charge. Authoritarian structure. I thought the fucking COVID would have proved that. For years. Yeah. Yeah, because once you go out, the people, like, that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to point out that there's a lot more to communities and people than people realize, and groups. You're not in the clique, you're not in the gang, you're not in the group, you're not in the team, you're not a, a team player, you're not a, you're not committed. You're not any of that stuff, you're just, I'm on the outside, as, I'm always on the outside when it comes to any of that stuff. Looking in, going, but still being part of it, still being involved, having to get involved. Like, there's one thing that I want to come out about, and I can't say it, but there is people that manipulate you, force you, think they're better than you, um, threaten you, use all. I can't wait to fight with you, to cause problems for you, to make it harder for you, because you're not complying or joining in or being friendly with them. That's what these groups do. All groups, all it's all gang, tribal gang mentality. And then they have, on the bigger picture, there's people who are handlers. And you have a handler where they keep, they, that once you, you're not their friend, they, they'll check up on you. They'll check in every now and again that about, a t about something or somebody that you have no interest in or no relevance in. Or didn't even know the person. But they want to feel like they're 
they're important or they've got something that that uh because they're miserable basically because they they haven't got anything else in their life and then they're being told by somebody else working with somebody the friends or whatever or they maybe they enjoy it who knows i i can't think on that i can't understand that level because i'm not like that i don't i'm too empathetic i'm too when it comes to people i'm too like understanding to see where where it's what what's going on why it's going on like that to uh, and i listen to their story so if they have something to say i'm willing to listen i'm willing to back off but if if i don't know and you're not willing to open or you i don't see any other relevance to what you're saying or then there's there's I try to decipher it and figure it out, and if it doesn't come to light that that you have all the nefarious plans or intentions, I don't want to know. Like it, it doesn't take much to decipher it. If you want to say the code, the, what what way you're working it, what way you're talking. I guess I say it on Twitch. There's get the messages going. Are you affiliate? Are you affiliate? Are you affiliate? I don't know what that fucking means. I'm pretty sure it means some other bullshit that I'm not, I don't know about. So I just fucking, whatever, I don't care about it. I don't want to know. It's, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's a fucking scam. It's a, what do you call it, a pyramid scheme. You know, some way just trying to scam somebody for money. And that's what these handlers do. They keep checking in. Oh, I, I, Sending, uh, I'll say, sending football cards in your door. Um, uh, if you've ever seen any of them, or coming around, or sending you messages, checking up on you. Try to ignore them. And you end up getting... Uh, because you're, because they know who you are, where you live, in your community. You're not allowed to talk out. And if you... If you go to anyone or try to, no one else wants to know because you're, they, they don't want to put, as I said, no one puts their neck out, no one wants to listen, no one, no one cares, it has relevance, because it's all based on fear, manipulation, deception, um, lies, the destruction of basically your your mind and your body to put you in a position to make you feel like you, you have no relevance until you get rid of yourself that's what the, that's what other people want you to do and these people in particular want that to happen to you if you don't join in and that's what this is all about that's what cities are designed for they're to cage you in to keep you there that's what towns and villages are built for they're not built on uh, community and tribal understanding and connecting with others no it's built on how much money can I take from you can it, Extracting gold from thieves, as some of them used to say. Um, have you got something wrong with you? We'll we'll help you. We'll we'll come in medical problems like NHS. Oh, have you got something? Wrong? Oh, we'll help you. We'll help you. And next thing you know, you come out worse off than what you than when you went in. I'm not saying that happens all the time, but generally, a lot of people do say that they they. They're worse off when they get something, let's say for free, but uh, they seek out the help that they think is the only option that you have. And whether that be like in the area that, that there's, and they control the areas because they work with the, 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 the policing, they work with them. It, it's all corrupt as well because they'll be threatened and then they'll it's all based on fear like who's in charge authoritarian structures like well you don't you you, you you listen to this person because he'll obviously get rid of you and he'll tell somebody else to get rid of you or they'll tell them to get rid of them and then it just goes on and on and on until it's like uh, like happens in other, other there's, there's countries in the world where you, you can't live in certain areas because it's too dangerous. Because of these these people 
well remove you if you don't do as, as they want. The, the NHS does it a different strategy where they offer you the free help. And these people genuinely won't help you. But they're being educated or handled, if you want to say, by by the, the bosses, as they call them, or the, the managers and all, with uh, human manipulation or human resources or what do you, what do you call it? Uh, the, the science of management. The management of science. And it's, it's figuring out streetwise, basically, of how you can get this person to do the task you want them to do without their knowledge or understanding. And they carry it out. It's like saying, jump into, like in a factory, jump into a certain pit and clean it out. But it's unsafe. And, and the person says, you just go and clean that. And then they're not around to delegate or talk to you about it. They disappear, that manager. And the reason they disappear is because they know that's dangerous. They know that if you get in there, that's not safe for, for a human being to do. That's what they do. That's just how this works. That's what they just said about the coroner. So they they're trying to talk about what happened to the person, but to a lot of people they have to say nothing because it's just another body on their list. And that's what a lot that's what people should be afraid of. Oh yeah, he's just he's gone now. That's it. You know, or she's gone. We're so numb to that. That's that's what I'm trying to talk about. It doesn't matter whether you're, they're they're gone on the street, or they're gone in a hospital, or they're gone. Uh, and when I mean gone, I mean you know, not here anymore. I mean they're actually like they've been handled, they've been controlled, and they've been dealt with. And to them, it's just another notch on the on the bare post. Just uh, yeah, this happens. That that's disgusting in a, a human society or race or whatever. There you go, they, he says it. You're forced out of your job, the emotions, um, lots of things can happen. Right, that's another one. You've nowhere to turn. I at the minute have nowhere to turn. I can't turn anywhere. I have my own problems too. And this is what I'm trying to have a voice about. In this in my community here. We I have a problem too. And it's you're muted. You can't speak out to anybody because you just get a, a reverberation like a bouncing off the walls. So um, you get told I'm the problem because other people are afraid to do anything or fight back. You don't get the fight back. They, you just comply and that's it. I'll say it, I guess. You used to be a gang in the past over here. And they were called the Black and Tans. Okay. I know it 
wasn't the black and tans, it was the wrong ones. That's the army. Um called the Tartan Gangs. And they fought back. And they ended up becoming a different gang. If you know what I'm saying. That's what happened over here. And they were all controlled. They were all created for a reason. And there's nothing you can do about it. Every country or place has its gang, has its problems. And people cannot get away from other people. Now, I don't know how it works in America. Because in America you have you have the right to bear arms. And in some places I've heard, I don't know if it's true, that they actually give you a weapon. And in some ways, to a certain degree, I think that's right. Compared to over here in the UK where you don't get a weapon. You don't get the fight back. The ones who have the weapons, make sure that you do, their communities do what you're told. That's my voice, but... For anybody who gives a shit. And there's no word to turn, no country. This is why all these countries, like, say for Africa, for that's a pretty big country, where there's these gangs. And when I say gang, I mean, like, groups of people that, that need to eat, they need to have shelter, the basics, they need stuff that to to support each other. But when you've got the things that's going on in the world, like uh, drug trafficking and other trafficking issues and things that are going on, if you turn that around and go, it has no no, di no monetary value. If you remove the monetary value from these things, then they can't they can't make money. They won't. It'll all stop. So let me say, right, and I'm going to say an extreme case, okay? So the trafficking, as I say, human trafficking is a real thing. But if there's no money in it, and there's no monetary value in it, uh, they say it's illegal, but if there's no monetary, if they remove the monetary value, you can't use that money. The, the money can't be exchanged for whatever trafficking, it may, human trafficking or organs or whatever it is. Because the organs are transferred to these places, they, they, these um, hospitals and stuff. If there's no monetary value in it, then or animal, animal uh, parts, ivory and stuff and all. If there's no monetary value in it, then it'll stop. It'll stop tomorrow. But because there's monetary value in it, that's what it's about. You just remove. The incentive and people just then stop doing it but because it's based on you say corruption i mean it's based on like what's the worst thing you can do and the worst thing you can do is human trafficking organ donation or organ harvesting and there's there's one more but i'm not gonna mention it as i said earlier that the these places do. And that's what society's based on. It's based on the monetary value of the M to just to, to corrupt and ruin humanity from the ground up and make us believe that uh, or educate us individually or on a group scale whatever way it may be, in a classroom or wherever, that it's, that it, so like, I say, when I say educationally, it's like, sex education, 
to children. That's group. That's group education. You're educating them something. Educating them on something that they don't need to be educated on. But because they're educated on it, that causes more disruption. And it, because it causes more disruption, it, it creates more distrust or problems for parents or, or and between the children and between everything else. That's how our our society's or the monetary system's built. Does no one ever think to themselves when it comes to getting paid, right, when you're in work? Do you ever think to yourself, why does it take them why is, why do you always have why is it why is it you always have to work a week? Now this will sound stupid saying it, but a week or a month, four weeks or whatever, right? That before you get your money, why do you not get your money up front? Because it's a, it's a obvious it's, it's it's an obvious outcome, the result that you need to do the work first before you get your your pay. But if you really look at it, the money's already printed, so it already exists. And you don't get paid. You don't get paid from your employer. You get paid from the government. And the money that's already printed is from your birth certificate. If you know where the the trail the money trail goes, right? You're working in a place to double up on um, the government's printed money that was made for you. That's put on the stock market from your birth certificate. If you know anything about finances, right? They remove them services like NH or health services and dental services and insurance. They remove them from you, medical insurance, if you don't work. But they offer them to you if, you, if you're working and then charge you as well. So the money's already there, but everyone's under the impression that you just get paid in four weeks or uh, two weeks or one week while the money already exists. Right, if you can get, if we can get where I'm, I'm under, what I'm saying. So, the whole reason of why what I'm trying to say about the corruption and the way that's done is because it's to dry you up. It's so there's you have. If you were working on, I know this is sound wrong, but it is what it is. It, it it's as bad as it gets. Where it's the corruption is you're working on the plantation, so you have to starve before you get your money or your food. They have to dry you up before you that you can before you rely on your employer or your slave master. But the money's already there. The money's already in existence. It's already in circulation. It's still it's already printed. So when you go to do the work, you're just adding to the 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 corruption or the wrong cause because you're not educated to understand why. You get paid in that form, in that period of time. Why it's like that? So you're just adding as you're doing that work to the to the the corruption. The more you're distracted, the more you're doing that, the less you see what's going on behind the closed doors. Oh yeah, no, no, I can't, I can't do that. I've got more work to do on my production line. And come the end of the week, you get your your the 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 minimum that they can give you, and that's what that's what the whole world is doing. While see the the people that are really running it, when I say really running it, I mean like the groups and places where it's very dangerous. They're actually the smart ones. They're actually the ones that they can make a lot of money in one night. But it's termed illegal because it's not it's not going through the procedures that the other bigger groups want them to do. There's a film called it. Uh, I'll not say it, but there was a film there, and a lot of places do it where they 
they kidnapped the wife and they got the man to give him all his savings money or all the money he had. And then they dumped the wife. They didn't get rid of her, they dumped her. But they made over a hundred thousand in one night. Some places, like it happens all the time. And this is just happening right in front of us. Where you can go straight onto the internet and see it all happening right now.
Pfizer's six-point plan, announced this week, is thinner than posh spice on the keto diet. But it doesn't matter. A Labour government is coming in what feels like a car crash in slow motion. And Labour's more radical ideas are already an accident waiting to happen. Hey, Don't I think I've said enough.